Hello everyone, uh, wanted to make a quick video today discussing some new news for Star Trek toys, uh, specifically Star Trek action figures. So for, uh, it was on July 13th, I don't know if they intended to do this, but for Patrick Stewart's birthday they made an announcement that Playmates Toys would be getting the license, was, well has gotten the license for toys for the Star Trek universe. Uh, again, and that's, you know, I think most of the, everyone's been reacting fairly positively with a little bit of caution. Uh, I understand completely why. Uh, so I wanted to cover that real quick. Let me take a, let's take a look at their announcement. It says, Playmates Toys and Viacom CBS Consumer Products today announced that Viacom CBS has awarded the global toy company with the licensing rights for action figures, vehicles, and ships, role play, and other toy categories for all Star Trek properties. Playmates will launch its new Star Trek toy line in 2022 following Star Trek's entry into kids' content with the premiere of Star Trek Prodigy, the first Star Trek series aimed at younger audiences. Among the qualities Playmates will bring to the Star Trek universe are its attention to brand detail, authentic portrait sculpting, and new product innovations. It plans to introduce to its forthcoming Star Trek collections. Fans can look forward to a new lineup of action figures and accessories from Star Trek Discovery, Star Trek Lower Decks, Star Trek Picard, and other Star Trek series throughout the universe coming soon. And future selections from the expansive Star Trek universe of series and motion pictures, including the Paramount Plus CG animated series Star Trek Prodigy produced by Nickelodeon Animation Studios and CBS Studios. Details on forthcoming product lines from Playmates will be announced at a future date. Uh, it then goes on and says, as Star Trek ready to beam into kids space for the first time with Star Trek Prodigy on Paramount Plus, we are thrilled to also enter the toy aisle with Playmates offering a new gener generation of fans out-of-this-world toys that will allow them to embark on their own Star Trek adventures at home, said Dion Vachos, Vachos, Executive Vice President, Hardlines and Retail, Viacom CBS Consumer Products. Uh, Playmates Toys has deep experience in developing Star Trek figures and play sets. In fact, they help to define and raise the stature of the range of collectibles. The expertise and ingenuity they bring to figures, ships, and more will elevate the play experience for kids and collectors alike. So, yeah, that's hopefully good news, like I'm saying. And there is a really interesting picture attached to the top of this article on StarTrek.com, which, of course, is being shared through most other blog sites and news sites and fan sites and Facebooks and Twitter and everything else. Um... And I'll get to the picture in a minute, but just to kind of give you a quick rundown on on Playmates and why some people are a little concerned. So Playmates uh, got its first license with Star Trek to start doing Playmates to do Star Trek toys in 93. That line ran through 99. The biggest complaint being was that there towards the end, around 98, 99, they started doing way too many exclusives and single store outlet only like i mean one of the ones that makes it frustrates everybody was the uh, the dax and the dress uniform the fact that they did that with uh spencer's spencer's gifts yeah and that was the thing that always got me about that one was that, like the closest spencer's to where i lived was almost 30 miles and that was a problem that a lot of fans had, was that there was not very many Spencer's locations around the United States. There was a few other things like that. And the mail-aways, which some of the mail-aways were easy to get, some of them were not. Then there was the famous uh, line in, in, in 98 and 99, the uh, first contact style uniforms that the Next Generation crew was wearing, that they didn't even make Geordi in that line. The whole line was only available at Target, and... Uh, I can't remember if it's that they didn't even release Dr. Crusher in the United States or like she only like got a few released in the United States and the rest were all released in in Europe. Uh, and I think it was the same thing with the, the 7 of 9 and the blue outfit that they didn't even release that one in the United States. So those of us in, in, in the United States couldn't even didn't even have a chance of getting that one. After that, there was only a brief period where there wasn't any Star Trek toys. And of course, keep in mind that all of those were done in the 
uh, four and a half inch scale. It's it's about a one fifteenth, one sixteenth scale, which is unusual. Um, a lot of people don't recall that uh, Star Trek has actually been done in three and a half inch scale or a, a one eighteenth scale several times. Uh, first was coming out in uh, the motion picture when the Star Trek the motion picture came out. They made that three and a half inch scale figure pretty much to match up with the Star Wars style of figures. Um, they then tried them again with Star Trek 3 and uh, then when Star Trek, uh, Star Trek The Next Generation got started in 88, Galoob had a contract for doing three and a half inch scale figures of the Next Generation crew as well. So that leads me up to 2009 Playmates managed to get the contract for doing Star Trek toys for the new Star Trek movie, the J.J. Abrams Star Trek film. And, and I have no problem with the sculpts. The issue was they decided to make two sets of figures. They made a six inch scale, which is kind of similar to, that was about the same time that the uh, Star, Star Wars Black Series six inch figures started getting really big. Uh, of course, Marvel Legends figures, uh, six-inch scale, had been going really well for several years. Um, and, of course, famously, that had all really kind of birthed out of the WWE, WWF figures in the, of the late 90s in the six-inch scale. That went, Those went huge, uh, especially in the adult collector's markets. But, so they made the, the six-inch figures, and they made three-and-a-half-inch figures, uh, real similar to that old Star Wars th scale that, you know, from the 70s. But then they didn't make any in the scale that all the fans already had collections of. And at this point, it had only been 10 years since the previous line had ended. It was So fans were I heard that, oh, you know, Playmates is getting a contract for doing Star Trek figures again. Maybe they'll continue doing these. And then they didn't. They chose to do two lines. There was also the issue of that they only did half the crew wearing their regular uniforms. The other half they did wearing cadet uniforms, which the whole cadet storyline wasn't really the strongest part of that movie. But, you know, they had plans to release the other half of the crew wearing the regular uniforms uh, for a, a Wave 2 because Wave 1 crashed and burned so bad they never got around to it. And, of course, everybody think the, the worst... <laughs> The absolute worst part of that toy line was the bridge set. Uh, I remember that when I when I finally got to look at one, and I and I, I pulled this this rubber mat out of the box, and I had this moment of "You're kidding me, right?" Um, that you lay a rubber mat out, and then you set some chairs and a few desks on top of the rubber mat, and that's your bridge and. It was, it was hideous. You could never get the rubber mat to really be flat unless you, like, put it under some heavy boards for several days. It was, it was, it was tacky. It was horrible. And, of course, that rubber mat would get, after a couple of years, it started getting mat, like, rubbery, nasty, sticky. Uh, and there's not a real good way of cleaning stuff like that. So, the, what's one of the big things that a lot of people are hoping for regarding this new line is that hopefully they don't make that same mistake again of, first of all, going with a scale that's not familiar to the Star Trek fans, and also making us at least a working possibility on those some of those accessories and play sets, because that was, that was a big bomb on the part of Playmates in that. So... Playmates then then lost the contract after that, and it's went around, and several other people have had Playmates contracts over the years. Uh, in the early 2000s, Art Asylum, which later became Diamond Select, had, was doing, uh, they did Star Trek Enterprise and Star Trek Nemesis, that's where they started off, and then they got to do a lot of the others. Uh, they've done a lot of the Deep Space Nine, some Voyager, and so forth over the years. Um, probably, I think the thing that was the coolest thing that they ever did was they actually made a life-size captain's chair, the Captain Kirk chair. Uh, I always wished I could have gotten one, but the, it was insanely expensive. Um, around the time of when Star Trek Into Darkness came out in 2012, Diamond Select 
did do uh, some of those figures. Again, those were, uh, I believe, seven inch figures. And all of those that Diamond Select did, the Art Asylum Diamond Select ones, were they were pretty decent sculpts. I liked some more than others. Uh, I think one of my favorites was actually probably, it was just a couple of years ago now, was the Borg that they did, which it actually it not only had like interchangeable heads and some interchangeable body parts and even some like, you could change out like the eye socket or something like that on it. So you could actually do army building really well with something like that. Um, but a lot of people agree that probably two of the best figures that have ever been made was that uh, when McFarlane, I think it was about two or three years ago now, did the Kirk and Picard figures. And that's all they ever made was they made Captain Kirk in the original series uniform, Captain Picard in the like season three style uniform, and that's been it. And then, uh, of course, Mago had originally done Star Trek figures that were, I believe, eight inches tall way back in the... 70s, while well, Diamond Select actually had managed to start doing modern Mego, Mego uh, back in around 2007. And then Mego, the company, actually reopened in 2018. And then they, they've been making some of those again. Uh, they actually just not too long ago released some new Next Generation and Discovery figures for those. And <laughs> I'm, I'm not personally a fan of the Mego style. I think some of them look absolutely atrocious. Um, there's uh, the the con that they made a few years ago. That was that was like if Ricardo Montalban had been melted. It was so bad. But I can I can appreciate the amusement of why some people like these figures. But uh, getting back to the the whole announcement. Um, you know, yeah, everybody's excited about this, and I'll be the first to say that I will probably buy anything Badgy. Uh, I love Lower Decks. Uh, Badgy is definitely one of my favorites to have come out of that. Um, most of the rest of them I'll have to kind of wait and see. Now, uh, by the way, I was, the reason I said all of that about the previous figures was to get to one of the current versions of the figures, which is the Super 7 Reaction figures. And this actually has to do with the picture that was presented. So Super 7 Reaction, it's the the reaction figures, they started doing the original series, oh god, it's been probably, I don't know, even six, seven, eight years ago now, when those came out. Um, and I actually did kind of like them. I'm, I've never been big into the three and a half inch scale. But they're pretty good figures, and they've been releasing them slowly over the years. Some of the sculpts are better than others, and they did, finally, it was a few months ago that they announced that they were going to be doing Star Trek The Next Generation, and they just released those a few weeks ago. And I don't like them. <laughs> um, especially all of them, their, their torso chest sections to me look weird. They look inflated. Like, like they're gassy or something. I'm, I'm not saying that I will never get them. I'm saying that for now I'm not precisely interested in them. Um, I do like the fact that the wharf that they made, they made his, his baldric to where it does come off and uh, could be switched to other figures or something like that. Now I said all that, I said all that to get to the picture that comes in the Playmates announcement for today, for the 13th. The picture has, there's five figures that appear to be being transported. Um, some of them are easy to see, some of them are hard to see, but the thing about them is the way that the body seems to be positioned. Like, you can clearly see that the one in the middle is Captain Picard. Uh, the one on the left definitely appears to be Data. Uh, the others are uh, Burnham, Saru, and then or they say that's Saru. I'm not. I guess it's the feet is what they're saying. Why they're saying that's Saru? I just it's, if it is, he's not tall enough, which that's another thing to be worried about. And then uh, the Discovery version of Spock there on the end, who will be in Strange New Worlds coming up when that comes out, I believe next year. But what concerns me is especially the Picard when you can see the way that the body is shaped, the position. And it reminds me way too much of those Super 7 reaction figures. Which makes me worry that they're going to be doing 3.5 inch scale. 
And if that's the case, I'm personally probably not going to be getting very many of them. Like I said, I will probably buy every badgie I can get a hold of, but beyond that, if they're the three and a half inch scale, I'm probably not going to bother. Just to be completely honest, at least not for now. I don't have interest in that. Uh, if they go six inch scale, I might. But to be honest, if the figures are standing in that position and they are the six inch scale, then that's a little odd because they're. That's one of the things a lot of people don't realize about the figures is that they have to have. Their, their shoulders and legs have to be proportioned in a certain way when they are a certain scale. And just looking at some of these pictures, I worry that these are going to be the three and a half inch. Um, which I know one of the big things I've been seeing in some of the forums after this announcement was. And it, there's a hint in the phrasing. Uh, let me find it where they said that. Uh, future selections from the expansive Star Trek universe of series, which obviously is going to include Strange New Worlds. That's that's pretty much a given in that statement. But you've got people who are hoping that might that maybe they'll do legacy figures, start bringing producing some of the figures that they missed out on doing, you know, back in the '90s, or maybe even actually reproducing some of the ones that didn't get released in a very large scale, like say the Borg Queen. Uh, so, anyways, that's that's my thoughts. I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts on it. Um, if CBS, if our Playmates wants to send me a badgie, I'd love that. All right, thanks, guys, and uh, talk to you next time.